Okay, I wanted to give you one other just brief example of where um, I've used situated learning in part because I think this example brings in a number of other ideas that we as designers and practitioners in our field um, ideally really should be um, thinking about and engaging in. So um, this really starts with uh, a, a story where uh, I worked for, I was a lead instructional designer for the National Center on Low Incidence Disabilities um, um, up in Colorado. And uh, we had developed online learning programs and made them accessible and things like that. And we were working with different folks in like blindness and visual impairment and deafness and hard of hearing and severe cognitive impairments and things like that. And um, as we were building things, one a parent organization, parent advocacy organization, reached out to us, um, Hands and Voices, and said, um, you know, they get a lot of calls from parents wanting to know how to handle IEP meetings um, for their uh, their kids. So I IEP is individualized education plans. Um, that's something usually that school districts develop uh, for a kid who has a uh, documented disability of some sort. And these meetings can be quite intimidating and, and even sometimes very contentious for parents. And a lot of times parents don't understand um, the laws around this or their rights or their children's rights and what exactly they can advocate for. So Hands and Voices came to us and said, can you help us put together a, um, some training on IDEA, which is the primary piece of legislation uh, that, that governs a lot of this um, for parents so that they can learn about the law. And so when we met with them, um, we talked for quite a while around, okay, what content, you know, we kind of kicked into instructional design mode around, well, you know, what are the objectives and da da da, da. And um, at some point, I asked the question of, well, tell me about, like, when, tell me when the parent needs to use this knowledge. Like, what does that look like? I, under, I want to understand the context of application. And what I was trying to do was really situate the learning in, in the context, right, of application. And so it was at that point that our conversation shifted dramatically. And um, the folks at Hands and Voices started telling us about like IEP meetings and what's involved in these and, and common questions that come up. And at one point, one of them said, you know, in fact, we've got, we've got this FAQ of every time a parent calls us, we can pretty much guarantee that they're gonna be running into one of 16 things that they hear. And it was at that point that we suggested a completely different approach that instead of developing this instruction or training on the law for parents and then expecting parents who are not lawyers to try to remember all of that in the context of these meetings that can be stressful or contentious and, and you know, kind of thinking through like if I were a parent, how would I feel? How comfortable would I feel citing the law? Things like that. Um, we said, whoa, hold the phone. Why don't we completely reorient this into a job aid that can be used as more of a just-in-time support um, that is much more situated in the context of what parents are actually going to have to do and how they're going to need to perform in that actual context. So rather than trying to operate solely on um, the presumption of recall of knowledge, which can decay over time, or you know, there's a lot to remember here as well, chances of somebody forgetting something important while they're trying to advocate for their child, it's pretty high. So instead we completely reoriented the design. What we came up with was what we called pop-up IEP and to this day, um, it's still widely used. In fact, you can see down here, here's the original copyright. So we developed this almost 20 years ago. Um, it's still one of the most widely accessed resources. Uh, and it's technically speaking, just such a simple design 
And I've always loved it as an example of how sometimes we overthink what we need to design. But by stepping back and really thinking about the person who needs to use that knowledge and use that learning in a particular performance context, how do we design to support for that situated learning or that situated application of knowledge? So here what we've got in this pop-up by EP is it's organized around the quotes that you tend to, that a parent will tend to hear from somebody else in a meeting. So let's say this is a very typical one. You know, usually an administrator will say, well, we know that we're supposed to apply, the, you know, provide this accommodation by law, but we don't have the money. Um, so when you click on that, um, it provides a quick description of well, what's the problem with this response. Um, some cautions uh, to the parents real quick and then ways here are some responses that you can use you know I can appreciate the dilemma that you face in these times of budgetary constraints but we really need to focus on the need for you know my child here or you know it's really a matter of prioritizing the money and um, this issue isn't about money this is about my child and my child's needs or um, let's not end the conversation about Joe's need because of money, you know, maybe this won't cost it. Anyway, so, you know, some sample responses to them. And then a few notes of like caution uh, and notes like, you know, stay focused on the needs of your child, stay away from conversations of cost of services, make sure it's appropriate, stay flexible but firm. Um, and then here's the statement where the section of law backs up the parent's support. So rather than trying to turn a parent into a lawyer, um, we're really trying to support the parent and being the best advocate for their child that they could be. And oh, by the way, have the support for the law in their hands at the moment. And what we found from this was um, this, as soon as we released this, it spread like wildfire. We were tracking um, who was accessing the website and sharing it where. And I think within a month, we just stopped tracking because it was shared everywhere. <laughs> it was being accessed from um, all over the US and starting to be accessed even in um, Europe and in other countries as well. And so uh, anyway, uh, this has remained a very popular uh, uh, pop up by or um, very popular intervention. Um, and I think it, like I said, I think it really represents how when you stop to think about what a person actually needs in the context of what it is that they're trying to do, that may suggest to you very different design solutions or interventions than traditional instructional design or training. So keep this in mind as a possible just example of, um, you know, may, there may be times where you're like, maybe I need to step back and reframe the problem that I'm, that I'm trying to tackle here a little differently and really think about it in a more situated manner and how that might generate a uh, more effective intervention that actually supports people at the point of performance.